We reveal the chilling moments when sinister predators come face to face with the reality of being caught. Watch as their twisted plans unravel and justice takes its course. Just like this first predator, a Twitch streamer who decided that annoying women for views and content was a good idea. Hey, listen up. You look so cute and you look so delectable. I want to put you on a plate and just eat you up. How about that? What's your name, baby? I know you're sorry. You're sorry you can't get with a hunk like me. You're sorry you're stuck with you're stuck with a c that you eat on. You record videos of you with other guys, and he wants to see that. Correct me if I'm wrong. And that happens regularly, she's right? Because it's true. Tell me I'm right on the money or not. Oh, so Tell me, okay, listen up, baby. I'm so sorry. You know I really tried. God damn you. Damn, her booty's so small. Now that's no way to talk to a random person. And the streamer's actions made the girl so uncomfortable that she was compelled to leave. Despite learning from this, he persisted in his creepy behavior. I don't want to bother you guys. I'm not trying to be creepy in any way, but can I get like one of your numbers and I'll be on the way and then we can meet up? I'm actually up. going to go meet our boyfriends right now. So oh, so I can't take you out or, or do anything like that? Yeah. Yes, really quick, just really stop quick. right now. Sorry. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you want. Uh, just, do you want? Just we're just, right here's, a, here's no, what no, we're no, wondering. No, I'm sorry. You're just so the look on this girl's face was terrifying, and these streamers didn't seem to stop as they kept making life difficult for plenty of other girls around. Want to be my girlfriend for five minutes? Do you want to just want to go on a little date? We're gonna just walk pinky. for a bit. Okay. Just a pinky. Okay. pinky? okay. Well, you can hold my hand. Oh. Yeah. So, hey, I'm here with my girlfriend. I'm here with my girl. Can you guys just shut the fuck up? I'm here with my girlfriend. Okay, just shut don't the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. I'm here with my girlfriend. You're making too much noise. Get the fuck out of here, asshole. Fuck. You. I'm so okay, sorry, Luna. No, I'm so, no. please. I, no, I was just protecting you. No, I was I protecting you, baby. Problem. Please. Oh, okay. Please. Uh, can I get your number? Oh, All right. Well, some of the women they harassed did the courtesy of calling the police. And just a few moments later, cops arrived to catch these harassers in the act. <laughs> you, you, you love it. It's, you know that there's like a. Oh, 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 excuse me, what's going on? Oh. What's, what's going on? Relax, relax. Oh, the chance man, you're back. What's going on? You're being placed under arrest. For what? Hang in a minute. Yeah. You just want to talk to you, you want to run. All right, now we're going to put you on your side. All right? Put your knees on the side. Go to your right? Yeah. There you go. Sit up. So they're arresting Carl, guys. Carl did nothing wrong. Actually, Carl isn't innocent, and he's done plenty of wrong stuff, and it seems like jail is the only place he belongs. Carl may have been a creep, but the actions of this next woman even overshadow him. You're under arrest for battery. Have a minor. On August 22nd, 2023, a distraught man came to the Stillwater Police Station in Oklahoma, complaining that he had seen explicit and disturbing photos and videos of his three-year-old daughter in his girlfriend's phone. Soon, the cops rushed to the woman's home and apprehended her. Okay, you Ashley? What's your last name? Okay. You're under arrest. The woman was identified as 19-year-old Ashley Cheetah, and her boyfriend claimed that she was simply abusing his daughter in the video. They met on an online dating site, and Ashley eventually moved in with him. Hold your pants for you. Where is he? Ashley, do you have any pants? Yeah, that's good. There you go. Are they jeans or shorts or shorts? Are they jeans or shorts? Are they I don't know. I literally just broke up. I don't. I don't know. Do you know like, where is your place where you normally keep your shorts? Ashley was not wearing any pants when the officers caught her. Therefore, the officers started to find her something to wear. There's some right there. There's pajama pants are fine. These pajamas right there. Okay, can I put you in there? Yeah, 
You got any form of like slip on shoe or anything? The officers proceeded to collect her belongings as they told her the reason she was being arrested. Ashley, already in a state of panic, started to cry, realizing the gravity of the situation. Is your ID in your purse? You have to go with it. Central. You want to? I can't. That's why I was here. That's why I came. Just in case I needed to sit in there. Okay. Yeah. Possess there. All right, Ashley. Did you tell me? You're under arrest for a second battery. Have a minor. A minor. Mm hmm. And possession of chopper. And possession of chopper. Oh my God. You Ashley was then arrested and taken to the Payne County Jail. She was booked into the jail after she was charged with five felonies, including sexual abuse of a child under 12, making or distributing types of obscene material or child pornography, possession of marijuana, violation of the Oklahoma Computer Crimes Act. Even considering this woman's actions, they pale in comparison to what this guy did. Break my hand. On the 9th of March, 2022, police officers received a tip that explicit images of children were being uploaded in a location in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Officers examined the pictures to be of young girls aged 3 to 15. They soon traced the images and discovered that all of them belonged to a single man, 43-year-old Ryan Schaffer. The officers quickly obtained a search warrant for his house and went over to arrest him. Hi. Hi there. Is it just you guys home? Um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna come in. No. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Why? 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 For what? Okay, step out, please. For what? Wait, what happened? Behind your back. For what? Hold on, wait. No, wait, 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 it was later discovered that Schaffer had an extensive criminal record as he was found guilty in July 1999 on two counts of second degree assault of a child. Baby, apparently I'm getting arrested. I don't know. They won't tell me. They'll, they'll fill you they in back at the thing. They don't have a warrant for the house, so, so they can't take anything out of your house. Over here. They don't have a warrant for my arrest. That's it. Can I click, kiss my girlfriend goodbye? Please? Just one second. I'm going to make sure nothing's on you, man. Okay. Anything that's going to stick or poke? Can I have a kiss, please? Can I have a kiss, please? Probably not doing kissing right now. Did she give me a hug? At least? Can I tell her bye? You can tell her bye. Can't have you touching, though. The predator had no remorse for his disgusting action, as he still pleaded with the cops to kiss his girlfriend goodbye. This shows you how sick this guy is. I don't know. I don't understand. I'm just getting off work. I know. Sick. Well, go listen to what the officer rolls or whatever his name is has to say to. Yeah, I don't know if he's not going to talk as well as if you want him at City. Uh, I don't think so. I'm going to see if they need me here for anything. and I'm assuming it's possession of for the charge. The officers had also gotten a warrant for Brian's fingerprints so they could unlock his cell phone and feed the content inside. However, when they attempted to unlock his phone, Brian refused to cooperate, fully aware of what the officers were after. Take your fingerprints, okay, and try to unlock these phones, okay? Understand me? Brian, I'm asking you to do this, okay? It's too bad, dude. Brian, there's a search warrant for search it. Search warrant okay. that authorizes me to do so, that. I don't care. Okay. Well, 
it's all right. you can you can be mad all you want okay <laughs> I'll break my hand. You're gonna break your hand? My hand. My own. Why would you do that? Jesus Christ! Here, do it out. Do it, dude. Why? Why the are you here? Which thumb it is, or which hand it is? Why am I going to jail, dude? For what? On inspecting his phone, the officers discovered five explicit images, and it was of minors, and it was enough evidence to arrest him immediately. Turn around now. Yep. Why are you arresting me? I have a search warrant to search the residence and a search for you. For what? Okay. For... That's why we're here. Yep. You asked and I'm telling you. I know, I understand. Settings, if you let me scroll down, there's usually the wheel for the settings too. You want to talk to me about it, or are you gonna not? Or do you not want to talk about it? I'm not going through what we went through last time. I okay. should have never talked to you back then. You didn't. Whoever was interrogating me, I don't remember. Highest. <laughs> Four days straight. It's gonna be admissible in court. What site did I supposedly upload to this time? I was, uh, what's your foot? Oh, yeah, sorry. Gotta put the seatbelt back on. Meanwhile, it was also discovered that Brian had another open child porn case against him from 2018, which was delayed due to the death of his court appointed lawyer. He still wants to wait. I'm sure. See if there's anything else he needs. Yeah, man, all, all I know is he's got the search warrant and the stuff going on. I get it's frustrating. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know you, so. He was later released on a $1,000 bond with a condition that he wouldn't possess any device that connected him with the internet. Well, it's like in. <laughs> Still open. I know. <laughs> Take a left, have a seat. Yeah. Ryan was then taken to jail where he was charged with felony counts of possession of child fee and bail jumping. He is currently being held in jail on a $25,000 bond with a condition that he has no contact with a minor, a smartphone, and a computer. And this is not the last creepy predator that was caught by the cops. Alright, so go ahead and place your hands behind your back for me, okay? On the 10th of June, 2023, police officers received a disturbing call from the security team of Cedar Point Amusement Park about a man who had been groping people and also assaulted a couple. Soon, the cops arrived at the park and started inquiring about the creep. Did he go up the fast lane? Yeah, he's talking to the big station right now. Okay. Uh, can I see if I can have someone come cover for me so I can talk to you guys? Sure. Do you know where this guy's at? He should be upstairs. Okay. He's got a beard on tattoos. He's wearing green. All right, I'm going to go up to the exit. You guys stay here. Another person claimed that the man was getting closer to him, and when he confronted him, the harasser punched him in the nose. The officers waited outside for a ride, anticipating for the man to show up. Excuse me, sir. Officer O'Connell, Sandusky Police. Can you step over here, please? I have one with me right now, just advise if it's not there. I wonder. Yeah. So no, no kind of, no kind of fight, anything like that going on. Okay. Okay. Right, I can see that. So, 
So do you, do you know why I'm speaking with you at all? Or did you have any kind of disagreement with somebody? Any kind of confrontation? Okay. Do you have an idea on you? Appreciate it. The man was identified as 30-year-old Wesley Crows, and the couple approached the cops and accused him of harassing the woman. As Crows got uncomfortably close to her and caressed her torso and hips. Is that a Richmond County or Wayne? Is that a Richmond County or Wayne? Surprisingly, the couple who Crows harassed decided not to press charges against him, thus giving him a clean check. However, there was another twist in the tale. You said you were not involved in any kind of altercation downstairs? Yeah, no? Okay. 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 Here's a man who, whatever happened down there, I mean, I wasn't there to see it, but yeah. Listen, whatever happened out there, I wasn't there to see it, but they don't want to press charges. Um, but if, uh, if Richland County doesn't want you, you're going to have to speak to these gentlemen from security. Um, they might ask you to leave the park for the day. Okay. So, so we're, we're waiting uh, to hear back on a possible warrant hit. Um, are you going to 27 him if we're not taking him? Okay. The couple did back out, despite calling for the cops in the first place, but this didn't mean that he was free to go, as the officers discovered something else against him. I have, I have my mine on uh, Sandusky, so... Officers discovered that Crows had an outstanding warrant for failure to appear for sentencing on a drug charge. The officers then proceeded to walk Crows out of the park, but they had no idea what was coming ahead. You're not getting charged with anything here. This is just for your warrant. So you get you got a warrant through Richland County. I don't know what it's for. But they want you, so we got to place you in custody, okay? Gotcha. Yeah, so somebody reported that they got into some sort of confrontation with you, but they don't want to press charges, so it's over and done with. You don't got to worry about it. Soon after, a member of the security team came over to meet the officers as he was about to reveal something shocking. Now we can bring him over here. There you go. I can get it off my belt. said it's uh the warrant is failure to appear for dangerous, dangerous so you did, did you skip a court date no I, i'm on papers okay then you can go tell the judge about it i don't know man I, i'm not from around there a woman and her 16 year old went over to the security and claimed that the teenager was assaulted by crows who else did you come with uh, my buddy my 
because it was always, it was did you drive or did they drive? No, they drove. They drove. So they have a way home and everything. Is he going to county then? You're going to go to Erie County and uh, Richland County is going to come get you tomorrow. Because we're, we're not driving you all the way down there, so Richland County is going to come pick you up. The girl claimed that Crows groped her and put his hand between her legs. The teen even took the picture of the man and showed it to the cops later who confirmed it to be Crow. Well, I heard your time, like my time, right? that's four years old. Okay. That, that one is? The, I never heard of Dangerous Crows. So you were, you were sentenced then? I, I was already sentenced to CBCF. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm sure they can get it straightened out then, but you still just have to go talk to the judge about it. Go with what's in the computer, so. Are you on probation then, or what? Yeah, I'm on probation, so how do I have it? That's it. They'll figure it out. The court will figure it out. This is a bullshit, though. Now, I mean, we don't have the paperwork, but that's just what's in the okay. computer, so we have to go with the face of The officers then proceeded to sit Kroos in the police cruiser as he was about to be taken to the police station. Go ahead and open it all the way, yeah. Face the car, please. If creepy Twitch streamers aren't what you're into, this next case was truly insane, where a man turns on his wife in an attempt to at murder. Scream, help me, bloody mo basically. I opened the door and, and then opened the door, the door closed. And then she got back in, closed the door, and you hear tons of stuff screaming. And Knocking around. It sounds like there's a struggle going on there's inside, a basically. There's struggle going on. Over there? Yes. Yeah. Sir. And I would totally, like, I want to make sure she's okay. Upon arriving at the scene, officers interviewed concerned neighbors who reported hearing an intense argument earlier between the alleged victim, Kyla Arce, and her boyfriend, Paul DiGiacinto, which they believe may have turned physical. Uh, the roommate, you got a picture of the roommate's car. And so him. The, guy the roommate came, came out, out of the building. I took a picture of his car. Oh, he left? driving out. Yeah, no, I took a picture of his wife's place. He drove away. Yeah, the roommate oh, came out of the building and said that the guy is not abusive and that's his best friend and he's known him forever. And when I asked him, well, why would a female scream at the top the of her lungs, help me, out. he just goes, yeah, I don't know. And then he walks away and leaves. So the roommate's inside there too? There, there was there was two guys. The roommate left. He got in the, this there gentleman right here he got cars. a picture of his car. The, the neighbors also mentioned that the altercation subsided after a man left the apartment. However, fearing the worst due to the intensity of the fight, they took a photo of his license plate number. Brown County Sheriff's Office. You're at the door, so open it up. After gathering sufficient information, the officers proceeded to the apartment where the screams had been heard. Despite knocking for an extended period, they received no response from the occupant. I can hear you at the door. Open the door, it's the sheriff's office. All right, due to exigent circumstances, we're 10 for. Due to exigent circumstances, if we have to go ahead and break the door down or get someone with the key to open the door, we will. We just need to find out if everybody's okay. The officers eventually heard movement behind the door and announced that they would be forced to break it down if no one responded. Do you hear it's still in your apartment or no? You're at the door, so open it up. Every day. Every day. 
I can hear you at the door. Despite this warning, they still received no answer. As the officers waited for a response from inside the apartment, a neighboring resident mentioned how frightening the man in the apartment was. This marked the fifth neighbor to express concerns about Paul's perceived danger. Extra circumstances, somebody yelling in now. They said they heard this one. Yeah, they come up to the yeah, door and they kind of, yeah, you can hear it, you can hear them dressing up against, they're probably looking at you right now. Two, four, five, nine, northeast, fourteen. They don't, this don't even have to go this far, but they, these people want to make it seem like I mean, if they want here. their door open, forcefully, that's okay. That's fine. Because <laughs> the fire, the fire rescue is going to come and open this door and then we're going to come in. With no response from the occupants, the officers deliberated on their next steps and decided to forcibly open the door. Glenn Bro, 5, can you uh, have rescue respond out here to help us with some forced entry? The officers called the fire department to assist in forcing open the door. Their action was justified based on multiple concerning reports that suggested a potential emergency situation where immediate action was deemed necessary, foregoing the need for a warrant at that moment. It's your last chance. Come out to the door. All right, we got fire rescue here. This is just me being instructional to you. I want you to listen up. Fire rescue is going to come, and they're going to go ahead and breach the door. It's going to be damage to this door, so I don't. I just advise you to open the door now for us to find out. If they have to breach the door, people are going to be put in handcuffs and to detain until we find out what's going on. It's just my warning to you, my first and final warning. Before the firefighters arrived, the officers gave the occupants another opportunity to open the door, but whoever was inside did not respond. We heard somebody yelling, screaming, they heard glass breaking, they heard uh, furniture being thrown around. Let's try to this door, I mean, it's... I'm gonna try to hide Yeah, I just whack that thing with the fucking... We could just hit it with the goddamn uh, axe. Well, can we try to at least minimal damage, or...? It's not gonna cluster like that, though. Yeah. Is he gonna arrest you coming? Well, we have to make sure she's okay right now. It's a welfare check. Based on the extended circumstances, we got to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come outside, man. I'm a cubby. You need a. You want to go? All right. Do you need a se second set of hands? No, I just don't want to leave my hands on the door. Okay. The firefighters arrived on the scene and the officers briefed them on the situation before they quickly took action. Within seconds, they forcefully breached the front door. Dispatch, make note that they uh, they basically was inside the house. Once they saw it breached, they came out the uh, garage door. At the moment the apartment was breached, Kyla and Paul attempted to escape through the back window, but they were not quick enough as the deputy spotted them. There's no way in the world you didn't hear us knocking at that door. The officers cornered the couple in the garage, where they were already on a golf cart, prepared to flee. The officer with the camera strapped on appeared visibly dissatisfied as he approached them. You got any guns, knives, weapons, anything on you need, we, we need to know about? Oh, oh, Nothing at all? At all. Okay. Why didn't you guys come to the door? Why didn't you come to the door? We bang. Why are you oh. shaking so? Why are you so, so? Why are you so? Why are you shaking? You guys just came out of nowhere. And I okay, well, you we came out of nowhere. You heard us knocking on that door the whole time. We literally are going to You didn't to hear us knocking. Place. We're banging no. the hell out of the door. Why did you guys open? Come to the door. We're we down the door. stairs. We banged pretty why are you hard. Shaking, so why are you so, so? Why are you so? Why are you shaking? You guys just came out of nowhere. And I okay, well, you we came out of nowhere. You heard us knocking on that door the whole time. We literally are going you didn't to hear us knocking. Case. We're banging no. the hell out of the door. Okay, My so hands are red. Banging yeah, on the door. And you didn't hear us. We're downstairs. Anybody else inside? I'm sorry. No, nobody else is inside. inside. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. Paul was ordered to hand over the cart's key, and the couple initially claimed they were unaware of the police.
police presence and had been outside the entire time. However, they blew their cover when Paul mentioned that he had just come out of the shower. Kyla. K-Y-L-A-A-R-C-E. Whoa, whoa, whoa. K-Y-L-A. A-R-C-E. A-R-C-E? Yes. How do you say it? Say it? Kyla Arce. Kyla Arce. K -Y -L -A -R -C -E. I'm so sorry you guys had to come out here and Well, so if you guys hot. would open the door, you would This would've... is brand new. No, I'm good. Thank you. What's your... Uh... What's your date of birth, Kyla? 052190. What's your last name? A-R-C-E. A-R-C-E? So it's Kyla A-R-C-E? Yeah. What's like your middle name? Um, in my, in my driver's like Saint Paul, Saint Paul. Do you have a middle name? Well, it's Kyle Alexander Saint Paul Are you guys married? No. The officers found it frustrating that Kyla was sticking to the fabricated story, especially since neighbors had been concerned for her safety. The deputies then separated the couple, conducting individual interviews to gather more information. Do you live here with them? Yes. So what's going on here? Why are we getting calls from your neighbors that they're hearing glass break and they're hearing stuff being thrown around. What's going on with you guys? Nothing. Nothing's I mean, going on. I, we were watching all, all, a show. Listen, 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 listen. I got information from neighbors all night long. Help me, help me. You're hurting me. Stuff breaking. Stop doing okay. this shit. What's going on? But like, what do you know? Come on, take a walk I, with me. I don't want to walk with you. Come with me. Can I just sit down? No, come okay. with me. When asked why their neighbors had called the police, Kyla repeatedly attempted to cover up the situation, appearing increasingly suspicious in her responses. Let's talk away from your, your friend then. Uh, I'm not saying you did anything wrong. Okay. I'm just asking about what's going on. Why are your neighbors saying this? Why are your neighbors saying all this about you? About you screaming for help, help. That's why we had to break in your door. Your door is broken. The fireman popped it. You're going to have to get the association to fix your door. Are you serious? No, I'm dead serious. All right? Um, We're banging on the door, banging on the door. Like I just told you, my hands are red, and his hands are red from banging on the door. There is no way you could not hear us. I'm so sorry. What's going on? The distressed woman continued to insist that she hadn't done anything wrong. When the officer informed her that they had forcibly entered her apartment, she pretended to be surprised, as if she hadn't been inside just moments before. Nothing at all, I promise you. Nothing at all. I'm not pressing charges. Nothing at all. Not pressing? Why would you not press charges? Why, I don't even you, know how to say the lingo of the cops thing, but well, like... Why would you not press charges? About what? If you said you wouldn't press charges, what were you not press charges? I mean, about? I just said that to just because I don't know what's going on. Nothing's going on, a hundred percent. How long have you been? With We're watching. Virginia? We've been together for two years. We're good. No problems ever. No so problems. That have As the officer recounted the events, Kyla began apologizing and even mentioned she wouldn't press charges. The officer noticed this and questioned her motive behind stating she wouldn't press charges. But Kyla continued with her bad act. Been hearing things. We're at the middle of the night. Yes. Nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. So they're lying. Literally yesterday, my freaking plants fell from the backyard, and I just started cry crying because I just couldn't do it at late at night. Okay, Maybe so, that's it. So then what you tell me is all the neighbors standing out here behind me that called us, yes. and your neighbors that live on your floor there, the second floor there, yeah. are all lying. I'm not saying they're lying. I don't know what their perception is they're with like you're whatever. For help. Okay. Right, and the fact that we're banging and banging and banging. And once we get in, you guys try to pull away? Because we're not, I don't, I didn't really hear you. Like, were you guys thing. sitting in the garage the whole time? We're, no, we're like sitting in the room. We're about to go get breakfast. And you didn't hear us banging on the door? No. That's I, 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 Tyler, I, I find that hard to believe. Just a we were ringing the bell. Okay, so then I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did your, did your bell go? No. Go to the phone or his phone? No. Well, why do you guys have a video bill? Um, it doesn't go to mine. Does it go to his? One. The lady even insinuated that her neighbors were overreacting. The officer then chipped in that either Kyla or her boyfriend would have received a notification about the deputy's presence through their video doorbell. Come here, bro. Come, here. Come talk to me for a minute. What's your name again? Oh. All right, Deputy Allen, bro. Look, situation didn't even have to go this far. Well, I don't know what's talking about. I get it. I don't know what's You're going shaking on. like it's like... Yeah, because who would it? Not only that, what's you got scratches on? all over you and stuff like no. that. What's going on? Talk to me. I have no idea what's you going tell, on. You tell it exactly. I How we have you, how do you on. have nothing was going on, dude? You're coming out of the garage. You're shaking like crazy. You got scratches all over. As captured on the second officer's body cam, when he separated the couple, Paul started claiming ignorance about the situation. The officer noted his suspicious behavior, but Paul defended himself, saying he was frightened by the officer's approach. I'm shaking because all of a sudden someone just blocked So you live here with someone else? That's, just, that's by myself. You live here by yourself or who is she to you? 
She's my girlfriend. Okay, so who was the other dude that was here? A friend? Okay. So what happened? Nothing. We were just hanging out. We watched TV and that's it. But everybody was yelling and screaming. You got neighbors over here. And people I don't, know who's people don't even live here screaming. saying that she was screaming at the top of her lungs. Something was going on. Look, I'm not trying to make a story up. I don't understand. And I don't want to I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable more than what you are in the situation. But the thing is, bro, we're trying to find out. This is more of a life or death situation. I understand. It's called exigent I don't circumstances. Understand what's going on, going on out of part. nowhere. So that's what I'm confused about. Contrary to the neighbor's reports, Paul claimed to live alone in the apartment and continued to feign ignorance about the situation. So why when we were knock on the door, you just didn't come to the door? We're downstairs. I'm in the shower, she's watching the show, and then we're downstairs? Go yeah. All right, check it out. This is the garage. I know the format of these, because mm -hmm. I've been in one. That's your downstairs right here. Your upstairs is up there. Just hear me out, because you live here, right? You pay rent here. I mean, you pay your mortgage here every month, right? So the thing is, I know the difference. This is downstairs. You weren't downstairs. No, we were knocking on this door. There's a bedroom down here on the bottom. Floor. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay, but I'm pretty sure you heard us banging on this door. I didn't hear anything. Okay. Look, I, I, you, look, I, look, I, I can't. I, I can't make you tell all, us what's I going on all the time. I hear things going all the time, so I don't know. Yeah. What is what? When you live right next to each other, you hear things all the time. So I well, don't know what. your neighbors and everybody heard you screaming. I know, heard her screaming, like something was wrong. And then she's not answering, so therefore that gives us even more of a suspicious incident where we gotta go and find out who who's alive and who's dead or or see if anybody's okay. That's where we're coming from. Okay. I mean, yeah, but everyone's fine. I mean, I get it. That. Okay. So do me a favor. Fed up with hearing the suspect's lies, the cop decided to confront Paul about the inconsistencies in his story. Paul remained persistent in his attempt to appear clever. You said it's a bedroom right here. Open this up for me. I'm not gonna open the bedroom door, sir. There's no reason. Well, we've already opened the door. I'm just asking you to open it There's up so we don't have to go back up. Because I can go back up and go back in. I'm already, I've already have, look, look, look. I have a, I have a lawful right to be in that home to make sure there is a bit nothing's going. Okay, nothing's so open the door, let us check, and then we're good. What is the, what is the reason? I don't understand, she's here. I'll go check if she's here, the garage that's it. Uh, yeah, he's saying it's a bedroom down there. That's okay, I'll make sure you, don't have, you don't have to cooperate, we're, we're good. I just asked him to open the thing, because uh, it's, so the door is already open and we have lawful right to be here. So just open the thing. Tyler, they think someone else is in the house, that's what they're trying to say to me. We want to make sure everyone's okay. Yeah, like, there's no one else in there. Okay, we'll open it up. Happening. Okay, we'll open it up then. For what? Okay, well, I'll just go, I'll just go upstairs and go down. Okay. I just asked him that. He said nobody else was here. He just said his friend was here and his friend just left. Now tell me the truth. Yeah, but I'm downstairs. There's too many. Listen to what I just said. Yeah. He just told myself and this deputy that nobody else is here. He said his friend was here and his friend left. So now you're saying that. So now you got conflicting stories. She may not know because she doesn't go upstairs to see. But how do you not know when you've been in the house the whole time? There's three. Like, like it's too, it's too much. I barely hear anybody downstairs. I work on my computer, and nothing's going on. I don't know if it was here. But RC maintains she's okay and doesn't need any help. So you're safe, everything's good. Everything's good, look at me. Okay. Look at my face, I'm good. And how long have y'all so been together? Sorry. You guys Couple have years. Couple years? Y'all have any children involved? I'm trying to. You're trying to, okay. You guys married? Yeah. Just boyfriend and girlfriend, just been dating? Okay. Yeah. okay. I mean, I didn't in realize future, that we were. Until, I'm not done yet, but in the future, if we're knocking on the door, just Hi, hello. Hi. Look, now your door is off the hinge, so. And you have to fix that. Seriously? Because the exigent circumstances due to the state of Florida, if anybody's in, in dire danger or anything and like that, so we have to respond. Anyone could be yelling at any window and you can't pick one. No I mean, I know that no one's door. here anymore, but every one of your neighbors is standing outside concerned with your own. Thinking he had evaded further confrontation, the deputy employed another tactic, asking Paul to back his story up. But he faltered. Together again, the couple continued to lie to the cop. So we're knocking okay, on the door. The now it all you see what I'm saying? Okay, now I get it. I didn't know that you said... Oh, I didn't need And I'm it. not talking about two people. We're talking yeah, about four or five it. people okay, out here saying no, that they heard you it. screaming. No, I mean, nothing. He just, he left. But so I'm the only one here. So what are you about that? I'm the only one, maybe, he just... 
I don't you I see the perspective. My supervisor asked you a well, direct question. I mean nothing. I just you're yelling about nothing, you're just like going around yelling screaming for no reason. I wasn't yelling and screaming like that. So what were you mad at? Yeah. Yeah. We know what happened. We are wondering why. Okay. Just yelling and screaming. Well, what were you doing? Why were you yelling? Yeah, it's not it's not it's not normal to yell and scream. So look, we're not here. Look, basically, we're not we're not here to get y'all in trouble. We're not here. So I guess what you're saying is that someone screaming and then the mail came out just like so rapidly. Yeah, and they also gave us the perfect description. They said you two were still inside. Yeah, so I guess we. I see what you're saying there. Okay. All right. All right. My bad. I'm sorry. Um. Yeah, nothing's going on since okay. there's only three females. I'm, I'm the female. I'm good. All good. I promise. Kyla finally apologized to the cops one last time, insisting that she was fine. Since the alleged victim maintained her stance of ignorance, the officers had no choice but to leave the couple. Just a month later, officers from the Coral Springs Police Department responded to multiple reports at Paul's parents' house. Among the callers was his mother, who informed dispatch that Paul had shot Kyla and his father. Upon arriving at the scene, Paul refused to surrender prompting the deployment of the SWAT team. After a fierce struggle, the assailant was eventually arrested. Fortunately, his father survived the incident, but sustained serious injuries. Tragically, Kyla lost her life at the scene, and Paul faced multiple charges filed by prosecutors. The officers here tried their best to avoid the premeditated assault but it just wasn't enough. In the next clip, the cops were able to apprehend the assailant before any damage could be done. Hey, drop it! Drop it, sir! Drop it! Drop it! On the afternoon of October 12, 2021, officers of the Southeast Patrol responded to a radio call about a man who had nothing but his underwear on, walking around a neighborhood holding a sword. Elmer, drop the knife! Drop the sword! Drop the sword! Put the sword on the ground! The officers arrived on the scene and immediately tried to gently persuade the man, who they called Elmer, to put down his weapon. Listen, Elmer, you're not you're not in trouble. You're not in danger, Elmer. Elmer, you're not you're not in danger. We're here to help you. Seeing he was not ready to comply, the officers went on to further assure the man that he was not in any sort of trouble and that they had only come to help. But the man wasn't having any of it. There you go. Put it on the ground, sir. Come over here. Talk to me. You're not in trouble. The police officer on the public address system further reassured Elmer that they were not going to hurt him and ask him to come over and talk. However, the man had no such plan. You are the king. You are a king. Come over here. Talk to me. Elmer, you are a king. All right. Come over here. Let's talk. You're not in trouble. Yeah. Put your hands up, king. King Elmer. Come over here, talk to us. King Elmer, come over here, King Elmer. Drop the sword, King Elmer. In order to win the man over, the officer decided to stroke Elmer's ego by calling him a king. But even that was not enough to get the man to comply. Elmer, drop it. I know, I got the taser. You got the taser? Yeah, but it's a short range. The officers realized the man was not going to surrender, so they started to consider the option of testing him. Hey, drop it! Drop it, sir! Drop it! Drop it. The officer in the passenger seat got out and pointed the tape the naked man, giving him one last chance to surrender. But this seemed to only upset the man more, judging from what he did next to the hood of the police car with his sword. Drop it, sir! Drop it! Drop it. The man then proceeded to assume a warrior's pose, presumably ready for battle, but he was no match for a hazer gun. If the maniac from the last case wasn't enough for you, this next predator shows us the real reason why we need police. My daughter was apparently attempted to be pulled into the bathroom by a young man here. Uh -huh. I said a young man. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. My, 
I was right around the corner at the racks where the clothes were. My son came over and told me someone was trying to grab her and take her into the bathroom. Okay. I obviously went over there and he was inside with her trying to get out of the bathroom, crying. That's another reason why I don't believe that he tried to push her out because I saw her in the bathroom trying to get out. That's the only way he told me I didn't see her. I would like you to not be around her, please. Did you get your idea on the girl's mother was in a state of shock as she narrated the entire incident. It's difficult to imagine the emotional toll this incident would have taken on her. And when you found him, she was in the bathroom. She was in the bathroom, and he was in the bathroom behind the door because the door okay. like opens. Okay. In. in to, okay. And I saw her trying to get away and like crying. Okay. Was. Did he have a hand on her, or just she was trying to... I couldn't see because the door, I could see, like, half of her. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Moments later, the girl's father also arrived on the scene and was visibly frustrated, eager to take matters into his own hands. Okay. All right. I've got everything I need from you guys. Okay. Why don't you guys go ahead? Just take off. We'll get back with you guys when we have more information, okay? What happened? Yep. Somebody got porn on your back. What? Somebody, a uh, kid that works there tried to pull her into the bathroom. Is he in there? No, hey. <laughs> is he in there? Stay here. No. Is he in there? I'm going to go deal with that in a moment, okay? Did, you, did he pull you under the back? Like I said, why don't you guys go ahead? Head on home. Now I'll get a hold of you. Maybe that is for like the officer did manage to deal with the angry and distraught parents as he went over to discuss the matter with the store owner. Luckily, he had seen the gravity of the situation and had locked a 19-year-old inside of his store. So, he does, he had a charge in the pier that he was on probation for a misdemeanor, but he was never charged and he never had enough evidence for the same thing. I see on the camera, and I can forward it to you, is him going in the back, mm -hmm. coming back out, mm -hmm. then looking and waiting till they came back around. And, and it's right back there in the corner, so I have no clear angle on that. On that. His name is Ainge, you got his information. I'll be getting that from him. Okay, so I got both doors locked just okay. because of that situation. I didn't want to right. escalate. Would you like to go around back and talk to him or just yeah, well, we can go through you? The store owner seemed reasonable enough as he directed the officer into the store and demonstrated the unfortunate event that had likely occurred. So, is this the bathroom in question? Okay. So, the way I questioned it was is. Alright, so just, oh, just head right in here and we'll talk in just a moment. We're right there in a second. So this is what he explained to me. That he was in the bathroom, okay? Mm-hmm. And he said someone pushed in, he went like this, and he went like this grab and said, hey, you can't be in here. But you guys get over here. Head on in there. So I'll forward it to you. Yep. I'll let you after gathering information from everyone present at the scene, the officer finally decided to get to Andrew. It was apparent that he had done the heinous crime he was accused of. Got an ID on you? Yes. Well, can I talk to you? Well, I need your ID so I know who I'm talking to first. I'm going to go to jail, ain't I? Because everybody's going to believe everything. Is he going to pose a tape? That's what he's doing. Right, can I talk, please? Yeah, go ahead. I was in the bathroom. Before I shut the door, I told her, because they pick a free toy. You can ask them up there. I told them that. You guys can get a free toy. I said, well, they're looking at toys. I shut the door. When I was using the bathroom, the little girl walked in on me. And she made it halfway in the doorway. I freaked out and tried to slam the door, and it hit her. That's why she was crying. I can't go to jail, dude. I'm on probation. What are you on probation for? Uh, a misdemeanor assault. Andrew presented his version of the story that clearly seemed fake and inconsistent with the events that had transpired, leaving the officer with no reason to believe him. I can't. Misdemeanor assault for what? I don't know. I. Where do you live at? The rescue mission. 
please, I can't go to jail. You got a phone? I can't survive in there. Just wanted to give you guys some privacy. No problem. Tom, Tom. I, I can't go to jail. What? I believe this is. Seeing the terrible situation he was in, Andrew went over to list a foolish demand that would tell you how ignorant he was. I have a question. Can we step out the back door so I can at least smoke while we talk, please? No. Not right now. What did you get in when did you get in trouble in? About a year ago. Over a year ago, maybe two years ago almost. Okay, and what did you, what did you get in trouble for? Assault. What happened? I got into a fight. With who? A friend of mine. We were at the movie theater, and we got into an argument after the movie, started the whole entire fight, the police showed up. Well, Andrew is a liar, and he is lying again as his previous offense wasn't for assault, but for following an 11-year-old girl into a bathroom in a theater in 2022. This shows what kind of disgusting human he is, and he should only be behind bars. You ever been in trouble for anything else? Nope. Okay. Hey, the police officer knows I'm down here. I'm gonna set my bag down to the side while you're That's watching. That's fine. I gotta get better cell service. It's not gonna let me. It'll let me share it. You gotta find like this under too. Yep. It doesn't show. See, there's the little girl right there. Andrew already went to the bathroom. See, here she's here coming to the bathroom. He comes back out. 4240. Oh, go ahead. That's where he comes out again. In there. But he doesn't go to the bathroom, so he comes around here and started looking for us to see where we were at. I'm in the office. Heather's right there. Chris is right there. And see, so he's looking for the little girl right now. He just saw the little girl walk back over there. And there's a little boy, see? Now he's walking that way. So her story adds up more than this. Mm -hmm. After seeing evidence from the security footage, it became clear that the little girl was speaking the truth. Moments later, the officer decided that it was time he passed his judgment. My one girl. Yep. Hi. Can I pick your stuff up? Please. Can I talk to you first? I already talked to you. Okay, uh, hold up. Can your I story doesn't add up. I'm telling you, I swear to God, I was in the bathroom. She, the reason why she was crying, she hit her head. I swear to God, I wouldn't lie, please. Well, I swear to God. I, I got a problem with your statement because I got the little girl saying you grabbed her by the shoulder. I got the brother who said you grabbed her by the shoulder. And the mom says she was trying to get out of the bathroom and had to pull away from somebody to get out. Cause can I explain? Can I, can I walk you to the bathroom and show you what We I, were just there. No, but can I show you? Can I show you when you walk to the bathroom? Dad, stay on the phone, please. Upon realizing the severity of the consequences awaiting him, Andrew started behaving like a kid as he started to cry hysterically. All right, so I'm sitting on the toilet. Open the door real quick, just open it. Mm-hmm. She walks right, she opens the door and walks right there. I hurry up and get up and try to pull my pants up and I grab her shoulder. Like I said, then the little boy came around the corner and when I tried to push her out, the door got stuck into my foot. It kept pushing, so I'm trying to pull my pants up and push her out. And that's when she hit her head right there. That's when she started crying and the little boy saw me put my hands on her shoulder because I put my hands on her shoulder to stop her from coming in fully and that's when I pushed her out. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I swear to God, please. Go ahead and get off the phone. You taking me to jail? Yeah. Please, please. Get off the phone. Please, get I off swear. The phone. I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God. Turn around, put your hands behind your back right now. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear! Stop. I swear! I didn't do nothing! Please! Can I at least speak to Tom before I go? Can I at least speak to him? 
Can you stop screaming? Yes. <laughs> Did the camera show me doing anything? The cameras back up more what the little girl said than what you said. However, his cries and resistance were not only limited to the police officer, as he also went over to plead with the store manager, who clearly had no sympathy for the predator. Tom! Tom! I swear I did it! No, Tom! So here's, here's the situation. Tom! Please! Please, Tom! So here's... Please! Here's the situation we're under. We're gonna ask you to leave the shelter. Even if you do get bailed out, I will have your stuff. I will, do you want me to call Jennifer and have her come pick up your stuff? You cannot stay at our shelter. You're no longer welcome. Okay? Right, listen, listen. That's listen, can you at least to listen to me? Okay. Can, can I say one name, Tom? One name, please, I'm begging you. So, if I'm going to jail, am I getting out? You are no longer welcome at our shelter. So why I have to go to jail if I don't go to the shelter? No, you're still going to jail. I, do you see another shelter? That's up to the judge and that, that stuff. They're sagging off. Yep. Can, can I at least call you while I'm in the jail? Please. Please. Jennifer would be better off to help you at this point. I mean, there's nothing I can do for you. I swear I did it, Tom. I, that's up to... I so, swear to God. That's someone else besides me to decide. Finally, the officer got hold of him and escorted him towards the police cruiser. So, do you want me to, so this phone, do you want me, do you want to take it with you? Yes. Your backpack. You, you can have this thing pick it up. All right, I'll, 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 I will call Jennifer. Okay. Here, put this in the backpack because yeah, he yep, can't yep. have those. Yeah, you got a lighter in there? Yeah. <laughs> His backpack's still back there. I swear to God. I figured. Yep. Why at least be able to make a phone call? Once you get there. Can they write down my phone numbers from the contact so I know the numbers? That'll be up to them. Turn and sit. Andrew even kept crying and pleading with the officer during the journey to the police station. The officer remained resolute and didn't succumb to him as he was finally taken in and booked. Why don't you tell me? Did the camera show me doing it? The cameras don't have a good view of the bathroom. The cameras show so you going into the bathroom. Because I have three people who say you had your hands on that little girl. And that you weren't supposed to. The mom came late. Yeah. She just saw me pushing her out of the bathroom. Yeah, well. The little boy came around my hand was on her shoulder. I was pushing her out. I'm not going to survive here. Hello. Can I leave the she motion, please? Well, <laughs> please. You don't even know his name. He's the owner of the rescue mission. I saw him at the food drive. Yeah, well. Can I please speak to him? Please. I'll see if he wants to talk to you. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> Andrew Jewell faced two felony charges, including kidnapping. However, the judge ordered a psych evaluation for him, which has been causing a delay in the proceedings until now. For the 2022 case, where he followed a 10-year-old girl into the bathroom, he was originally charged with assault and battery. He was sentenced to 180 days in jail and two years of probation. Presently, he remains in jail, held on a $50,000 bond. It's always pleasing to see a predator getting caught, such as this guy right here. Someone else in the car? Are there any guns in the car or anything like that? In June 2022, Chief Heather Wolf with the Cumberland Police Department found a suspicious ad on a website titled Daddy for Little. Chief Wolf replied to the ad posing as a 15-year-old girl. The two started chatting, and only a week after this, the man agreed to a meetup, but he had no idea that he would be having cops waiting for him. Try to put your hands up! Put your hands out the window! Slowly grab your keys and step out of your vehicle. Hands up, face away from me. Step out. 
Face away from me. Face away from me. Slowly walk back with their hands up. Face away. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Face away. Keep walking. Stop. Get down on your knees. else in the car? Are there any guns in the car or anything like that? The man was identified as 44-year-old Jason Bowers, who was a surgical technician. Surprisingly, Jason was also married and had two children. Moreover, drove over two hours to meet the girl before being caught by the cops. He said no one else is in the car. Jason's wife was surprised to find her husband doing such a creepy thing. She claimed that he had never done anything like that. Well, they're, they're not close right. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, they're backwards because Peter not put them on backwards. My husband has to fix them. Actually, here. Someone stop. Yeah, she's just going to put him in the interview room and he can just okay. sit and so, sit for a second. It might be trickier than what we can do. Maybe we can turn some all, there's a whole bunch of bags and stuff inside, and I see there's like shooting targets, so there might be a gun in there somewhere. But yeah, just take pictures of everything and then just grab anything you find. So I'm gonna go back to oh, okay. electronics. Yeah. We have to, we need to take. Does, did he have and, a phone on him, or is it in the car? It, there, it's in the car, I okay. believe. Perfect. He did not have a phone on him, but he should have two phones. Hey, John. I don't think so. Thank you. Yeah. See you, John. Later, the officers decided to search his vehicle, and upon searching, they discovered plenty of unusual stuff, including a tube of lubricant jelly. Um, can you take a picture of that lube that was in that bag? How can he come here? Well, I mean, there is a lunch packed in the back. Maybe he didn't want to use his card to bring anything in. That's why it smells like weed. I got weed. Really? Anybody want some? Where was that in that little fret thing? Yep. Oh. Just here, put it back. The cops then decided to talk with Jason, and he was taken to an interview room. However, Jason refused to answer any questions and was promptly escorted to the jail to be booked. Step on out. I'm gonna walk around the back of the squad. Walking. Left in that room. Mm -hmm. Not at the moment. Go Jason was then charged with felony using a computer to facilitate a crime and attempted second degree sexual assault with a minor. Later, he was found guilty of the latter charge, whereas the first charge of using a computer to facilitate a sex crime was dismissed. He was ultimately sentenced to three years in prison and seven years of extended supervision. However, this wasn't the last time a predator was caught by the vigilance of some officers. Cleveland County Sheriff's Office created an online account posing as a 14-year-old when they received messages from a 68-year-old guy. The conversation went over two months, and eventually, the predator asked her to meet up for Little did he know that several deputies would be there waiting for him. Um. 
During the two-month investigation, the old predator sent some disturbing messages throughout having no idea that an officer was posing as one. It's truly unsettling to imagine a person as old as him committing such a heinous activity, and it makes us realize how such people come in every age and guise. The officers did a fantastic job in uncovering the truth as they finally arrested him. Moments later, the officers started to search his vehicle as he sat in the back of the police cruiser. <laughs> That brings to the end of today's cases. If you enjoyed, please consider showing your support by liking this video and make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.